Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bogey King. Glad you're here today. Today I wanted to quickly jump on and talk about my initial on-course impressions of the Kirkland Signature Irons and Driver. Hopefully you've seen my unboxing videos of both of those clubs. If you haven't, I'll put links in the description below, or you can just go to my channel and check them out. I was hoping to go to the uh, simulator and hit the clubs. Um, unfortunately, schedules just haven't worked out just yet, but I was able to go out and I've played nine holes and 18 holes with these clubs. And so I used my Garmin smartwatch to collect the data on distances. And I did get a rain session. The conditions weren't ideal, but I did take away some things from that. So I wanted to come on here quickly, talk to you guys about what I think, what I've experienced so far. And then of course, as I continue to use the clubs, I wanted to come on here and give you guys additional reports. Um, right now they're sold out as far as I have seen. Um, when they are in stock, the Irons go for $500 in the United States, and the driver is $200. It's a pretty phenomenal price for uh, clubs of this caliber. If you haven't seen TaylorMade is suing Costco uh, for patent infringement based on the design of these irons. Um, so, you know, if they're doing that, then they're doing something right. And for 500 bucks, you're getting a great set of clubs. So before I get into the specific data, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. It goes a long way to help the channel. Drop a comment below to say hi. Let us know if you have been able to get these irons, if you're planning on it, or if you've thought about it. I'm hoping that this video or series of videos is helpful for you guys. At Bogey King Golf, you know, we do everything from the average golfer's perspective, that mid-handicapper, you know, because we're not professionals. And so what I look at is, is there an inexpensive way that you can get into golf or help improve your golf game? And clubs like this, can they actually help somebody like me, who's a bogey golfer, uh, improve my game? And so looking at the numbers, so far, I've been pretty impressed. The one thing I do want to call out is that there is data uh, in science that kind of proves during the cold temperatures, you do have this diminished ball flight and distance. And so, you know, conditions change, atmospheric conditions are different. And so um, what they say is really it's according to the USGA that for every um, 10 degree drop in temperature, there's an equivalent of two yards of diminished distance in your ball flight. So on average, it really equates to about 21 yards of difference between, you know, temperatures between 70 and 90 degrees to temperatures in 22 to 32 degrees. Now, the average temperature that um, I played in the past two times was around 45 degrees. So it wasn't below freezing, but it's definitely cold. And so when I looked at the numbers of each of these clubs, I really think that, you know, it's pretty impressive um, already. And again, it's only been just a couple of rounds, very, very minimal, um, you know, access to them, but it really has so far shown, I think some really good promise. The main thing that I do want to call out and I'll put some, um, I'll put some graphics up when I took these to the range, uh, again, weather conditions weren't ideal, but the dispersion I noticed right away was very close to center. Um, from a miss hit to a really good hit perspective, the ball stayed relatively true to the path I was looking for. Uh, for the irons, the club feels great in your hands. The weight feels balanced. And I feel like I can get a good tempo without trying too hard. And I feel like um, from a you know club face perspective, um, I get good visibility. I can make good and strong ball contact. So that's pretty good. The driver has felt pretty phenomenal. For a $200 driver, it sounds, in my opinion, fantastic. It doesn't sound hollow. A lot of times if you've been around golf for a while and you know cheap clubs, you'll hear kind of that ting or the ping, you know, just a really um, kind of hollow met metallic sound. This has got a titanium face, carbon fiber body, sounds good. And again, um, on the last round, I used it on every hole that I could where I needed a driver and I tried a few different swings, a few different adjustments, and it was honestly, I think one of the best golf rounds I've had recently where I hit the driver straight and made it almost, I think it was every green except for the first one. So um, even the first one, it was just off to the right, just to the right of the cart path. So it wasn't even a slice, it was just a push, but I didn't feel like I had made great contact and I still put the ball in play. So that's right off the, right off the bat, that's favorable for somebody who is looking to improve their golf score you know, drop their score down a bit. So again, with that in mind of that 20 ish yard swing, let's look at the numbers. Let's talk to them. I did not get to hit every club a lot. And so the averages are going to get better. We'll keep reporting back that information as we get it. Looking at the driver, my normal driver is the big berth of B21. My average based on my Garmin tracking is 238 yards on average. 
Just on the little bit of time that I've used the Kirkland driver, my average is 227, so about 10 yards less. So if we do the math, we're looking at about 10 yards more in ideal apples to apples conditions. I have, uh, this set is four through pitching wedge, and so I, for my four iron, I have the Ping G425 hybrid iron. My average distance with that club is 178. It's really interesting, the average distance so far with the four iron of the Kirkland is 178. So, you know, that tells me that as temperatures get better, I might see maybe a 15 to 20 yard distance improvement. We'll see. Again, I need to keep playing with these clubs and find out more, but right now, this data is extremely promising. I also want to call it the conditions are still not great. We had a lot of snow, a lot of rain, a lot of wet conditions, and so the courses are still saturated. Playing conditions are improving, but they're still not great. So I think so far these are pretty promising numbers. The five iron, I did not get a chance to hit that. So the numbers were my KR, or sorry, my XR iron series. I average around 175 with that club. Um, I'm hoping to see similar with the uh, Kirkland five iron, but we'll bring you more of the data when that's available. From a six iron perspective, I normally hit my XR iron 159 on average. I hit the Kirkland iron 153. Again, very close in range. I definitely think with the warmer temperatures, that number is going to go up and definitely be in front of the XR iron. From a seven iron perspective, my XR iron, I average 156. With the Kirkland, I am at 147. Again, really within that ballpark, you add that distance and you're right above it. From the 8-iron perspective, I think I've only hit it once, so the numbers are not um, that great, but they're not that far apart. So the 8-iron from my Callaways, I hit on average 144. Uh, I hit the one that I had here, 123. So it's about 20 yards different, but again, ideal conditions, it should improve. The 9-iron perspective, um, 131 from my XR, and I'm at 115 for the Kirkland. Again, I didn't hit it a lot based on the distances that I was playing. Um, and so I definitely think that's going to improve with the better weather. Pitching wedge, I averaged 123 with my XR, and I had a 110 average with the Kirkland. So again, we're in the ballpark. If you're looking at the differences, you're looking at all the factors, I'm encouraged by this. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, the level of forgiveness and the level of dispersion with all these shots was... Um, I feel like it took way less effort to get the ball to go straight and to go where I wanted it to go. Only a couple of miss hits, and even those were not like crazy slices or off the course. They just were off to the right or off to the left a little bit. And I was still able to play and recover, um, honestly, you know, in a pretty good spot. So I really think these are promising numbers. You know, Bogey King Golf, we're also honest, right? Like I'm bringing you this straight from the rounds. I'm not trying to doctor the numbers or change anything. This is what it is. Um, and we're going to do it more. We're going to play more. I'm going to come back and give you guys updates throughout the spring into the summer. As I do anticipate the clubs becoming more readily available. And so as they do, this should hopefully give you guys enough leeway and enough advanced information to make a decision for yourselves. So something I have said before, and I'll say it again, is that I don't recommend if you're new to golf, going out and buying really expensive clubs. If you can find a set of used clubs, or if you already have clubs, use them, get to know them, get to know your golf game. And then once you feel comfortable, once you're scoring, you know, in that 100, 110, 120 range, um, maybe a little bit less, it's all dependent upon the person, maybe then start thinking about exploring new clubs. You know, it's tough because you're going to go to a place like Golf Galaxy or um, any of the other stores and they're going to let you hit a bunch of different clubs. The Sim's going to show how great you are and you're going to go on the course and you still have to have a good golf swing or a decent golf swing. So I think that's really important. But that's it I have for today. I hope this was helpful. I hope this information gives you some guidance on whether or not you want to buy these clubs or not. Um, drop a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, if you guys want to see more and hopefully between now and next video, you guys can get out and play some golf because I miss it. I want to play more. I want to play as much as I can. And this weather is so prohibitive. So we hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. And as we say, everybody here at Bogey King Golf, you can still have fun even if you're playing plus one. So next video, get out, play some golf, and we'll see you guys later. All right, later.